chapter second degree equations you have studied about equations in eighth standard they are simple equations that is equation involving one variable of degree 1 so we studied about ax plus b equal to 0 this is the general form of a first degree equation okay in 10th standard we are going to study about second degree equation we can say the general form of a second degree equation is ax square plus bx plus c equated to 0 here the variable used is x you have only one variable and the highest degree here is 2 we are going to solve second degree equations and we are going to find solutions of second degree equations look at example problem the need side of a square is increased by 1 meter the area became 36 square meter what is the length of a side of original square talking about the original square we don't know the side so i took each side to be equal to x now we are given each side is increased by 1 meter so what is our new side x will become x plus 1 meter now what is the area of a square we know area is equal to side into side or a square so we can write area is equal to x plus 1 the whole square now we are given x plus 1 the whole square is equal to 36 now we know 36 is the square of 6 isn't it so we can say x plus 1 the whole square is equal to 6 square now remove square on both side then what will you get you will get x plus 1 is equal to 6 therefore x is equal to 6 minus 1 you get x is equal to 6 minus 1 which is equal to 5 meter so the side of original square is 5 meter is it clear you get the first question in page number 81 when each side of a square was reduced by 2 meter area became 49 square meter what was the length of side of original square here again we took each side of the square to be equal to x now what is the new side now we can say new side is equal to x it is reduced by 2 meter so we can say new side to be equal to x minus 2 now similar to our previous problem we are given area so we can equate x minus 2 the whole square is equal to 49 now you know 49 is the square of 7 so we can write x minus 2 the whole square is equal to 7 square now taking root on both sides you will get x minus 2 is equal to 7 in our next step x is equal to 7 Minus two taken to the other side becomes plus two. So you get x is equal to nine meter. From that we can say the original square will have its side equal to nine meter. Children, look at the second question of the first exercise. A square ground has a two meter path all around it. The total area of the ground and the path. is 1225 square meter what is the area of the ground alone look at the figure i took the side of the ground to be equal to x okay you can see a inner square which is shaded i have taken each side of the square to be equal to x meter okay now come to the question you have 2 meter path all around it so i have marked 2 meter on all the four sides now what can you say about the length of outer square 
it will be this inner length x plus 2 meter added on both sides. So you get x plus 2 plus 2. So we can say side of the ground to be equal to x and the side of the ground including the pathway to be equal to x plus 4. Side of ground with pathway gives you x plus 4. Now we are given total area of the ground and the path. That is the shaded portion and also the unshaded portion together is equal to 1225. So we can say x plus 4 the whole square is equal to 1225. Now we know 1225 is the square of 35. So we can write x plus 4 the whole square is equal to 35 square. Now taking root on both sides you will get x plus 4 is equal to 35 Otherwise, x is equal to 35 minus 4, which is equal to 31 meter. Now, 31 meter is nothing but the side of the ground. We got side of the ground to be equal to 31 meter. Our question is to find the area of the ground alone. So, to get the area of ground alone, what we have to do use the formula side into side. Since this side is 31 area is equal to 31 into 31 which gives you 961 square meters. Look at the third question children. The square of a term in the arithmetic sequence 2, 5, 8 etc. is 2500. What is its position? We are given square of a term in this arithmetic sequence to be equal to 2500. We know the formula to find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence to be n d plus f minus v. This is the formula to get the nth term. Let us substitute d and f value. Difference is 5 minus 2 which is equal to 3. So you get 3n plus first term 2 minus difference 3. So you get 3n minus 1 to be the nth term. We are given square of a term is 2500. So what did you understand children? You know 3n minus 1 the whole square. Square of a term. That is the nth term is equal to 2500. Now we know 2500 is nothing but 50 square. So we can write 3n minus 1 the whole square to be equal to 50 square. Now as we did before taking square root on both sides you get 3n minus 1 is equal to 50. Therefore 3n is equal to 50 minus 1 taken to the other side becomes plus 1. 3n is equal to 51 or otherwise n is equal to 51 by 3 which is equal to 17. So we can say the position is 17th position. 17th term of the arithmetic sequence will have its square equal to 2500. Last question in this exercise. 2000 rupees was deposited in a scheme in which interest is compounded annually. After 2 years, the amount in the account was 2205 rupees. What is the rate of interest? In 8th standard, you have studied about compound interest. Isn't it? Know the formula amount is equal to P into 1 plus R by 100 whole raised to N. Now 
amount is given to be equal to 2205. Let us substitute amount is equal to principal value. It is 2000 because 2000 rupees was deposited. 1 plus R is not given. So let us write R as R itself. N stands for number of years and we know it is equal to 2. Do you understand? In the next step, let us take 2000 to this side. So you get 2205 by 2000 is equal to 1 plus R by 100 whole raised to 2. Now you can cancel these two terms, isn't it? If you cancel it by 5, you get 4, 4, 1 divided by 4, 0, 0 is equal to 1 plus R by 100 whole raised to 2. Now what do you know? 441 is the square of 21 and 400 is the square of 20. So we can write 1 plus R by 100 the whole square is equal to 21 by 20 the whole square. It is because 21 square is 441, 20 square is 400. Now as we did before, take square root on both sides. Then you will get 1 plus R by 100 is equal to 21 by 20. What is the next step? R by 100 is equal to 21 by 20. Let us take 1 to the other side. So you get minus 1. Otherwise, R by 100 is equal to take 20 as the common denominator. So you get 21 minus 20 which is equal to 1 by 20. So R by 100 is equal to 1 by 20. Let us multiply numerator and denominator by 5. So that you get 1 5 is 5, 20 into 5, 100. So we got R by 100 is equal to 5 by 100. That is rate is equal to 5 percentage. First exercise is over. More questions we will discuss in our next class. Thank you.